Boy, howdy, how many of you guys were waiting for this? Disturbed, Immortalized, and uh, Ghosts Meliora, which actually, both of these reviews are being done kind of at the same time, or posted at the same time. So, here's Disturbed, which we needed to talk about. Up there is Ghosts Meliora, which we definitely needed to talk about. So, definitely check out that review almost instantaneously after this one, because it's another huge release that needs spoken about. It's a monster. So, Disturbed has been away for about five years. It's been a long time since we've gotten any new material from them. Now, as far as David Draymond is concerned, we've heard his production work on albums such as the new Megadeth, Super Collider, and we've heard his own work with Device, which really didn't go all that well. Uh, but it's really cool to see Disturbed come back after all these years, and many people say that it was just what hard rock kind of needed, especially after Gene Simmons' comments about rock being dead. So, Immortalized had this major chip on its shoulder going in, and it was something that was subsided quite a bit whenever The Vengeful One, Immortalized, and uh, uh, Fire It Up came out, the three singles off of the album that preceded it. Although, Fire It Up, I think, just made a lot of people happy that it seemed like Dave and the boys really liked to rock the pot. Uh, but this is an album that really needed to be solid from inception to conclusion in order for it to really feel as though these guys had really returned back to prominence. And with The Eye of the Storm, the very first track, which is a, about a minute and a half long introduction, mainly an instrumental, in fact it is an instrumental, uh, you hear a track that you could easily hear the band using to sort of welcome them to the stage whenever they go to tour for this album. And it showcases that while guitar solos and the like may not be the fixture of every Disturbed song, it's something that can happen. And they're pretty talented guys. They have the ability to actually really command your attention with their work. And then launching right into two of the three singles, Immortalized and The Vengeful One, we start to realize that this was a group that, with this record, was trying to really pinpoint more than just that new metal idea that was really their rise to fame, their rise to prominence. Instead, it showcases that they just have a fierce love of hard rock music and metal in general, and uh, that can be brilliantly illustrated by the introduction to The Vengeful One, which really feels like it should be a, a, the introduction to a Judas Priest song. But whenever we get past those singles and get this track such as Open Your Eyes and The Light, it definitely feels like there's a lot of companion pieces that are being uh, etched here. A lot of things where the sessions definitely seem to harbor some similar emotion whenever different tracks were being written. Though I really have to say that whenever you make it to your mind, things get a little bit different. Uh, we get away from some of the, the higher energy or the mid-range typicalities of Disturbed whenever it comes to their songwriting to With Your Mind seeming like uh, they wanted to go back a little bit to the 1980s or maybe combine some of the elements of the kind of revolving door strange do-whatever-you-want songwriting process of device mixed with the 1980s in order to produce what could be considered a bit of a ballad, either that or one that certainly seems to be uh, a song that's all about being thankful for something coming into your life, whether it be uh, somebody's wife or somebody's child or simply the advent of the music business, whatever this might be talking about, uh, this is definitely a track that feels unique and has a really nice substance to it. It's one that feels extremely accessible and listenable over and over again. And then we get to track number 11, which we're going to talk about in about a minute because it needs its own moment. Never Wrong, which is track number 12, actually reminds me of Sickness Era Disturbed, or basically anything that really encouraged that really quick, uh, very quick on the draw, almost, uh, almost as though you would expect him to be rapping style of singing that uh, David Draymond was able to do, and what made The Sickness really such a unique album and disturbed such a unique band at the time. That rapidity really accents Never Wrong and makes it probably a second half uh, a second half sleeper hit. It's one that definitely feels like it it offers a lot to the listener. Although Who Taught You How to Hate, which is the final track on this album, just feels a little bit too typical for Disturbed's repertoire as opposed to really having the opportunity to end the album on a very different and strange note. I feel like they missed an opportunity with that one right there. Although, if there's anything that they did do with this is that they definitely will keep the uh, or will send the traditional fans of this band uh, home very, very happy, considering it will remind them of their classic material. So let's go back to track number 11. Track number 11 is entitled The Sound of Silence, which for those of you who are unaware, is a, uh, it's a cover by Simon and Garfunkel. It's a very, very well-known song, very famous. I don't have to explain jack and shit of this to you. 
Whenever I first saw that, I thought to myself, I bet you any money I will have ended up liking the Nevermore version that they did uh, on Dead Heart and Dead World a lot more. Because that was very, very unique. They kind of put their own spin on it. And Disturbed, David Draymond, did the song as, was as it was done traditionally, with a very, very soft musicality in the background, with a very skeletal composition and let his voice for the first half of this track, and really for all of this track, really be the focal point and really dictate the emotion of this song. And you probably think you know where I'm going with this. No, you don't. Because he does a phenomenal job. I have to give David Draymond all of the credit in the world and then some because he transformed the sound of silence by singing it the exact same way but he transformed it into a track that not only blends uh, the harder or aggressive edge of metal through just the depth of his voice, but also he's able to silence it enough. He's able to give it enough of that, that caring, that love, that respectful edge to really just bring this track to life once again to a brand new generation. Cover songs don't traditionally have that capability. Cover songs usually are just a band that's playing the song that they really, really like. But I feel as though that David Draymond will really usher in a brand new love and appreciation of The Sound of Silence by Simon and Garfunkel to maybe a lot of metal fans. I think that it will happen because this is a track that he performs magnificently on. It gave me goosebumps and chills, and I'm not afraid to admit that. His voice on this track is definitely the illuminating factor. Now, that that's, is that something that really boosts this album, all of that, up into the stratosphere? Eh, not really, to be honest with you. It's definitely a song that can really amplify any show. It's just timeless and classic as far as songs are concerned. But I really have to reward the performance. Overall, this album is really not all that bad. I think that uh, I expected maybe a little bit more based around how much I did enjoy the singles off of this disc. But it was overall not a horrid experience. In fact, it was... Pretty damn good. I'd actually give this album an 81 out of 100. I feel that a couple of the tracks in the middle get a little bit uh, too similar to one another in order to uh, really feel different and really stand out. I feel like the standing out portion of this album really falls to the singles to Never Wrong, the, the cover, obviously, of Simon and Garfunkel, which is just magnificent into your mind. Uh, the other tracks feel like they're just sort of second tier. Uh, aside from that, I want to know what you guys think about Immortalized by Disturbed, so let me know in the comments below. And I want to know what you think about Meliora by Ghost. Let me know in the video above me. Definitely go over there and check that out. Like, comment, subscribe, and all of that stuff. Did you like Immortalized a lot? Is this your favorite Disturbed album now, or is this one that just sort of falls kind of in the middle? For me, I think I'll always be biased toward the sickness, because that album just felt unique whenever it came out, but I, it's not all about me. I want to know what you think. Let me know. Thanks.